Caffeine. Most of us consume it every day in our coffee, energy drinks, certain foods, and even medication. Some people use caffeine for an array of health benefits to boost energy, to lose weight, to stay focused, to help get stronger. But what some people don't know is that it is in fact a drug and does have addictive properties, as well as negative effects on the body and mind. I'm Jayla Jackson, a student athlete at Missouri Valley College and I took on the task of conducting my own research on the effects of caffeine. So caffeine is known as a stimulant, so it's a drug, and so it stimulates the body. Uh, and so what it ends up doing is it opens up the blood vessels, so you get more blood flow through the body. And then in doing that, the actual drug itself increases your blood pressure. Caffeine is a stimulant, uh, not unlike oh, amphetamine or something like that, just a little less potent, and it tends to wind everything up. It gets your epinephrine moving and everything else. It's part uh, your your body gets excited, there's no other way to put it. It's interesting when they talk about that because you're increasing the blood pressure, so yes, your blood pressure starts rising. Um, but at the, at the same time, caffeine is also a diuretic. So it helps you go to the bathroom and cleanses the system a little bit by that, uh, a little bit through that. Um, I think the other effects that caffeine end up having as being a stimulant is that it actually affects the central nervous system. So the central nervous system gets stimulated and you know the central nervous system has uh, your ability to focus and your uh, ability to um, focus your attention and reaction time um, and just your ability to do things become increased due to the stimulant action. Makes it wakes you up. It uh, gets your blood going. It's a diuretic, so um, unfortunately, it makes you sweat. It makes you uh, urinate a little bit more, um, but it also uh, makes you awake. You know, focus that kind of thing. Because it is a stimulant, students at NVC use caffeine in many different ways. I use it for when I work out so I can have energy to do the workout. That's pretty much it. Normally to wake me up in the morning, so before work I'll have a cup of coffee just to get me going so I can feel energized to actually do my job. Most of the time when I consume caffeine it's usually when I need to do something physically demanding or mentally straining. So whether if say I don't get enough sleep the night before I'll use that to kind of help me get me through the rest of the day. There are so many questions and myths about caffeine, and many young people in today's society really don't know what's going on with their bodies. I know it can give me some heart problems later on. Um, other than that, I'm really not well versed in it. I don't know all the effects. I just know that it has too much acid for you, and like that's not good. Probably like heart stuff too, I would imagine. No, <laughs> I just consume it. <laughs> um, I know that it leads to like, you know, diabetes or you know, um, you know, people being overweight. I know it could hurt you, and I know caffeine can be like very uh, dependent. People could be dependent on it, and uh, I'm glad I've never really kind of fell into that. But yeah, I've seen people that oh, I need my coffee. I can't. I'm not me without my coffee. And, yeah, I mean, not as in-depth as I sh honestly should be, but I know the negative effects and the positive effects as well. I started to think about all the sports that are on campus that would use caffeine the most. The first was eSports. My friend Jacob Cooper was able to tell me how caffeine affected his performance. I think it, I think, honestly, I think you could kind of classify that into the aspect of how important is caffeine to every like normal person's day and it's very important not only for them but for us too because like we need to focus and vice versa 
And so it's more of just like we kind of use it as a normal person working like a nine to five job would do. We just use it as a means to help us concentrate on our job and focus. <laughs> and it's two ways, right? So as I was just talking about with um, raising the blood pressure, so your resting um, heart rate will go up because of the caffeine. So if you take your pulse, if you're, if you're taking caffeine, it generally goes a little bit higher. So your resting uh, pulse might be up at 80 to 100 beats per minute. Uh, and your blood pressure might get up, might spike up to you know 150 or 160 uh, over 100 or 80 to 100 at that point. So in doing that, it increases the blood flow to the body. We know scientifically that if we increase the, the blood flow to the body, we have more ability to do the things that we need to. You get more blood flow to the muscles, there's less chances of cramping, there's less chances of um, getting, injuring your muscles at that point. Um, your body's ready to go, it's warm, it gets to that point. Uh, and then like we were talking about with the central nervous system before, if you've got more blood flow, you have a better chance at focusing, you have a better chance of being more self-aware of what's going on, you have a greater chance of lifting heavier, um, and then you also have a, a better chance of just overall performance in that sense. Since esports isn't really challenging to the body, but to the mind, Another sport I thought about was powerlifting. The sport of picking up and setting down heavy objects puts your body through high amounts of stress, and I wanted to know how these athletes are affected. Coach Edwards, the head coach of the powerlifting team, explains why some of his athletes use pre-workout so much. Yeah, my, my lifters take it pretty much uh, every time they lift, so pre-workout type stuff. Um, I, th I would imagine most of our athletes to some degree take some kind of pre-workout, whether it's pre-workout to train or pre-workout before games, energy drinks, any of that. A lot of kids drink coffee, a lot of kids drink sodas, that kind of thing. So caffeine is definitely the most uh, used substance there is, at least at uh, collegiate athletics. off by visiting the school library on campus to use their research database so my information will be factual. I stumbled upon an article that talks it's about how caffeine cool. is being frequently used by people in the military and I instantly thought of my older sister. She is a former Division I athlete at the University of New Mexico, a skateboarder, bodybuilder, and also a MMA fighter. With her being such an active person, she needs a little boost to help her get through her workout. So I was curious on how much caffeine she consumes in a day. Throughout the day, I only consume it once uh, right before my workout. I take about 300 milligrams um, right before just to take, I don't take pre-workout, so I use it as pre-workout. So that's how often I use caffeine. I thought it was interesting how similar me and my sister were with caffeine, but I wanted to know why she used it. <laughs> Uh, why do I use caffeine? Uh, I, did, uh, I started using caffeine because I start, started a new job and I was tired all the time, I wasn't sleeping, so everyone else was using it um, and I was just dying in class once. So I decided to just try it and I um, realized it gave me the energy to focus through class. So I started realizing maybe I could use it whenever I get tired. As she began talking about how she would use caffeine when she was sleepy or tired, I decided to expand on that idea of caffeine affecting how you would sleep. I took it upon myself to visit the Fix Given Hospital in Marshall, Missouri to talk to David Coleman, a sleep doctor, to shed some light on the subject matter. So caffeine uh, can impact sleep uh, and, and primarily through uh, adenosine. Uh, adenosine is a, uh, a it's got sleep hormone that builds up in the body uh, during wakefulness and 
caffeine has the ability to counteract adenosine in the brain and as a result of this um, it can help us with wakefulness oh, and as, as a result that can impact sleep uh, because the effects of caffeine uh, last for long periods of time. Many people look to caffeine as this energy booster to keep them going when they are feeling low. But what if I told you that caffeine is one of the reasons why people are having migraines, or worse, hospitalized? How often do you consume caffeine? Uh, lately, not very much. Mm -hmm. I kind of cut down on caffeine. Um, okay, so why have you stopped using caffeine? Because uh, I was getting really bad headaches. Like really bad headaches. I have migraines like three, four days. I'd be in my room in the dark, like no sound, nauseous. So I just kind of changed up my whole diet and eliminated caffeine. Mm -hmm. Migraines, because what happens in migraines is that um, they are responsive oftentimes to caffeine. So why are they responsive to caffeine? Uh, adenosine, uh, when injected into the uh, cerebral veins, is a vasodilator and has been shown to cause migraines in and of themselves. Well, when you, <coughs> and, it, it, and it can happen both ways. It all depends on what's causing your headache. Caffeine, once again, is a stimulant, so it's going to cause work on that fight or flight reflex. It gets everything mobilized in your body. One of the way, if you're mobilized, if your muscle tissues are moving, they need more oxygen. So your blood vessels are going to expand to carry more blood and thus more oxygen to oxygenate the tissues, the muscles, wherever it needs to be oxygenated. So if you have a problem in your brain where that, and not necessarily a problem, but if you have a, a blood vessel in your brain that opens up, expands, causes pressure in your brain, it can cause a headache. Other places, your headache in your brain may be due to a constriction, okay, because of just the way you're put together, your genetic challenges and everything like that, and the constriction of blood flow to your brain is causing a headache somewhere in your brain. So by giving caffeine, it can actually relieve the headache. So nobody knows for sure. People generally find a pain reliever for a headache that works the best for them, and that's the one they take. So there are some over-the-counter items that actually contain caffeine in the context of aspirin and Tylenol and other things that actually provide relief for certain people. Well, when I was working at a call center, I used to drink those Nas energy drinks. And they have like, I don't even know, it was just like the regular canned ones. And I would drink maybe like three or four of those. And then I had like a little mini heart attack and I was in the hospital for three days and then I didn't drink them anymore. People, when caffeine becomes a problem, or the caffeinated drinks, or the energy drinks, it causes what's known as a catecholamine shower in the heart. In other words, there's so much stimulant, the heart gets confused, and it causes a massive MI or myocardial infarction. And that's what these kids, young adults, end up dying from. Uh, so, yeah, there's a problem. It doesn't necessarily cause heart disease. I'm not aware of any long-term studies, but there are, there is evidence to support the fact that these kids have died because of a myocardial infarct, which was caused by overstimulation from the caffeinated, primarily the caffeinated drinks. I thought it was interesting when they explained in great detail how caffeine affected your brain. The thought of having a heart attack would scare many people. Being mindful of the amount of caffeine we consume on a daily basis is important. I asked the sleep doctor for more information on food and drinks that would contain caffeine. So the sources of hidden caffeine are, um, you know, there's some in chocolate, there's some in decaf coffee, there's some in um, uh, root beer, but really none of those are substantial amounts of, of caffeine. Really the big thing that's going to get you as far as uh, caffeine, uh, a hidden source is in medication, primarily in weight loss control uh, uh, stimulants because they have a pretty high dose of caffeine. So you really should be checking the, uh, the label for the ingredients and how much caffeine is in uh, those medications. Moderation is key, but it's hard when caffeine is a part of the culture we live in today. So I sat down with a couple of people, including my little sister, on how they used to drink caffeine at a very young age.
up to questions. They're just simple questions about yourself and as much as you know about caffeine. Um, so, um, at what age did you start, like, um, drinking caffeine? I think definitely under the age of 10. Probably, like, 8 or Eight or 9. Okay. So, um, why did you start um, consuming caffeine at such a young age? Uh, just seeing my mom drink it, my family members, I just thought that's like something adults do. So as a kid, I'm like, I always wanted to grow up really fast. So I was trying to be an adult sooner than I wanted to be. So I thought, hmm, this is an adult drink, so I definitely could be a part of this. <laughs> uh, you know, it was more of a cultural thing. Everybody drank tea where I grew up in Asia, so it was just kind of a thing that everybody did. Plus my father introduced me to coffee at a pretty young age and I always kind of liked the flavor of it. So I kind of just went back for a little more and then, hey, can I get a cup of coffee now instead of just a sip of your coffee? And so it turned into a daily, I need a cup of coffee kind of thing. More so for the flavor of it, I guess, than it was for the caffeine in it. I don't think I really realized what I was intaking at that time, more so just I enjoyed what I was drinking, you know. Um, I think that's, that's, I don't think I started caffeine because I knew it was caffeine, you know. Yeah. Since I started so young, it was more so, like I was saying, just a, a flavor thing. Tea, coffee, co pop, you know, soda. Well, I've been consuming caffeine every day or every morning or at least twice a day since I was maybe 11 or 12 years old. I drink coffee regularly. So yeah. why did you start consuming caffeine? I would say, so I'm Bosnian and I would say um, coffee is a part of our tradition. Uh, like my parents would have it every morning after every meal uh, at night and I've kind of <clears throat> followed their habits. And I grew to like it, you know, more and more the older I got. That's funny. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, now as an adult, how often do you consume caffeine? Um, about one cup a day in the morning. N usually not more than that. Sometimes I do like two if it's a particularly, like, if I have to close the clinic, then that's when I feel like I need two cups of coffee. Listening to these stories... I noticed the amount of advertisement of caffeine surrounding children and young adults. How long have you been working at GNC? Uh, a little over three years now. Okay, so working at GNC, how often do you see customers come in to buy pre-workout or something with caffeine? Um, every single day. <laughs> yeah, every single day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think mean, that guy just bought pre-workout. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's a daily thing. If it's not pre-workout, it's energy drinks um, or literally even caffeine tablets. Like, we just sell caffeine on its own. Um, we even have a multivitamin that has uh, a little bit of caffeine in there as well. So, yeah. So, Honestly, I feel like it's going to be there as long as esports is going to exist because of just how much of a bond that the two corporations kind of have made it you see it everywhere especially um like international tournaments you'll see uh even on their players jerseys like their sponsors and you'll have like a monster you have like a red bull right here and so you see it everywhere uh, definitely a hundred percent and i didn't realize it till i really started working here how much of an addiction i provide for other people not well not only other people myself as well even on my days off, I notice myself coming back up here just to get a drink because I know there's caffeine in it and I know it'll keep me going through the day. And I realize that sometimes I get headaches without you know, drinking caffeine, getting some sort of boost to my day. So yeah, I really do feel like in this day and age, us young people, we're, we get so easily addicted to just everyday things, you know, caffeine being number pretty far up there, um, I would definitely say nicotine would be high up there too, but especially with our culture of following trends and hopping on waves, it's definitely really, really easy to get caught up in that Starbucks, not even Starbucks, but just coffee trend, even if it's not for the caffeine, but it has caused, I feel like, a caffeine epidemic where everybody has to be caffeinated at some sort of way throughout their day. 
Um, when I worked at Dunkin' Donuts, we had free coffee and free espresso shots and whatnot. So I went overboard, of course, and wanted to try all the new flavors they had. Um, it led to a point where I was like super sick, super nauseous feeling. Um, and after that, I kind of had to realize I couldn't consume that much coffee in one sitting. <laughs> My dad actually has a slight intolerance to caffeine, so he doesn't tend to drink any at all. And a few years back I actually experienced some heart palpitations from drinking a lot of caffeine, so I held back for a while, but in moderation it's, it's okay. But I am aware of some implications of caffeine. I have consumed 1200 milligrams of caffeine. Um, I went on a bit of a binge. It was like one of the first, within the first six months of me even like starting drinking caffeine, I had um, Bang Energy drinks and I just chugged through four of them. And because each one is 300 milligrams and I drank all those and I didn't sleep for about 48 hours. Yeah, I mean, I would say everything will be okay within moderation the problem is like with the youth i would say ages yeah 17 to mid 20s people do sometimes tend to abuse caffeine whether it's too much pre-workout or double scoops or that kind of thing um yeah um, but if they're responsible you know and smart with it it shouldn't have any bad effects mm -hmm. as my documentary is coming to a close we've highlighted on the negative positive, have talked to many students, athletes, doctors, pharmacists, family, and many people from different backgrounds. With all of this information, moderation is the difference between healthy and unhealthy individuals. I would say look at, uh, for those who abuse caffeine, is just kind of look at the signs, look at your symptoms that are going on. If because you are overusing it so much that it is causing a negative effect, maybe you should start changing something in that, uh, or just lower the dosage you're taking. Because uh, either way, if you keep taking a higher dose, then your tolerance is gonna go up, meaning you're gonna have to get more. So you may need to wean off it every once in a while, take like a week or two off, just so your tolerance doesn't get too high. Uh, but if it gets to a point where it's negatively affecting your health, then you should probably take some kind of action about it. Whether it be caffeine or the associated energy drinks, once again, everything's in moderation. Much like my folks and your parents or your uncles and aunts and grandparents all drank coffee to a particular degree. That's great. That's fantastic. But they did it in moderation. Those ones who drank seven or eight or ten cups of coffee a day, there are people who genetically can do that. But by and large, the average person shouldn't, couldn't, and wouldn't. So unfortunately, with sweet flavored drinks, people don't understand that, no, it's probably not good for you. So just once again, moder moderation. Not to be used all the time, but I can see where it might be effective occasionally. If you feel like you need to rely on caffeine, it's going to be a struggle for you. And I think uh, it's just like any other addictive properties or addictive substances. If you continually feel like you need to have that, that's something that you kind of need to look at and maybe find a way to back that down. Wow, Sinatra. Okay.